Hello beautiful people, my name is Amanda Zitto. If you are new here, I make travel vlogs, how-tos, and general encouragement for you to get out and do the thing. In August to September of 2020, I went on an 8,000 mile loop of the United States on my Honda CB500X. If you have not watched that series, I will link it above my head. I'm pretty proud of it, so please go check it out if you haven't already. Today, I'm gonna to be talking about everything that I took on the trip, give or take a few tiny things, because it's been a couple months. I should have done this when I unpacked the bike in the first place, but here we are because a lot of people requested this, so I'm doing the thing. The reason I don't normally make like these kinds of packing videos where I just show you everything that I took on the trip is because I find that they kind of get a little outdated really quickly because depending on the trip, I may take different things. Uh, depending on the weather, depending on what kind of trip, how long I will be gone, like all these factors. I'm constantly getting new gear, new upgrades to certain things, trying to like perfect the setup, but that's kind of a misnomer because it's never going to be perfect. It's just constantly evolving. <laughs> Camping gear. <laughs> this is also pretty much everything that goes in my big old duffel on the back of the bike. Starting with the big three, my tent, which is the Big Agnes Copper Spur HV UL2 bike packing tent. I talked about this in my favorites from 2020 video, if you haven't watched that already. Huge, huge upgrade for this trip and probably will be my go-to tent for a very long time to come because of just, look how small it is, so small. My trusty sleeping bag, which is the Wilderness Next Adventure Wildy Down 20 degree bag. I've had this sleeping bag for like two and a half years now. It's super trusty. I love it. Uh, it does leave a little bit to be desired. I want to kind of upgrade to maybe a zero degree bag just because I'm a really cold sleeper, which is why I have this pile of stuff here, which we'll get to in a minute. <laughs> Sleeping pad. This trip I had the Big Agnes insulated Q-Core sleeping pad. A little bit more narrow than my favorite X-Ped sleeping pad, but I'm still working on patching all the holes in my X-Ped from my trip to Babes Right Out in 2019. So it being a little bit narrow is really my only complaint. Perfectly good sleeping pad, very well insulated. About the same as my X-Ped, maybe a little bit more. I also have the little puff up blow sack to blow it up so I don't have to use my mouth, which is super useful. Moving on, I always carry a couple more regs in my duffel bag uh, as well as in the front, but we'll get back to that later. A little first aid kit. I have a little cocoon pillow. My camp chair, which everybody was super curious about, is the A-Lite Mayfly chair. They don't make this model anymore, but A-Lite does have a lot of other wonderful camping chairs. I like it being low to the ground because it means the ground is also my table. <laughs> it works for me. It's nice and compact, um, a little bit smaller than some of my other chairs that are more like sitting height or normal sitting height. Anyway, moving on. This is my uh, electronics bag or one of my many electronics bags that was sent to me by a wonderful uh, subscriber before the trip so I could house all of my electronic needs. So I have the WD Passport Pro, which is kind of a knockoff of a Narbox. And uh, this is how I backed up my SD cards because you just stick in the slot and it copies everything off the SD card. I always carried a couple of extra wall plugs. It housed my collection of USB cables, both USB-C and regular USB. This is the battery charger for my Sony cameras. I have two of the smaller battery packs, both RAV power. Both of these little ones are 16,750 milliamps. If we get into this guy, this houses my big boy, and this guy is 27,000 milliamps, but he also has a three prong plug as well as two regular USB plugs. And this way I knew that I would be able to charge my drone batteries and my tablet. The little case that I keep the big boy in also has the charging cable for it and the charging cable for my heated gear batteries, which we'll get to later. Um, a couple more extra USB cables. I also keep these the BioLite string lights that I took along in the duffel bag, just kind of keep everything that's like for camp in a similar area because I only get these things out when I get to camp at night. I also have the SOL emergency bivouac blanket, um, which is really only there if and when it gets so cold in my tent that all of my backup ways to warm myself up in my sleeping bag aren't working. I can throw this around my sleeping bag and it acts as an extra insulating layer around my sleeping bag, trying to keep all of that heat in. It does work. The only downside that I found doing this 
is that it does end up making my sleeping bag just a little bit damp by the morning because of like the moisture from my body can't escape. So it's just trapped there. <laughs> Moving on to my little sleep system here, I have an alpaca hat that I pretty much only wear for sleeping because it looks silly on me the rest of the time. No, I'm not going to put it on for you. I did take two puppy jackets. You can laugh at me if you want to. I used one to wrap around my feet and then I wore the other one to bed over top of my merino wool layers. This actually works incredibly well for pumping up the temperature rating for your sleeping bag. Plus, if your feet are warm, you are warm. That's, that's just how it works. I do own down booties now, so I don't have to take the extra puffy jacket anymore, but the down booties probably take up just as much space as the extra puffy jacket uh, because down packs down so small. It wasn't that big of a deal. Um, I also use the down jackets to pad my tablet and the keyboard in the duffel bag to keep it from banging around. These are my sleeping clothes. Um, my sleep socks are actually in the clothing bag, which I'll get to in a minute. These are a mid-weight merino slash polyester mix base layer pants and long sleeve. I pretty much sleep in these exclusively. I will use them as extra like layering up layers in the case that it gets really cold, but I try to just use these for sleeping so they don't get sweaty. And so I have something nice and relatively clean to crawl into when I go to bed. So I'm not losing body heat because my clothes are damp from sweat from the day. Cool. <laughs> and like I said, I did carry my tablet and the little keyboard for the tablet in the duffel bag wrapped in the puffy jackets and it stayed perfectly safe. It didn't break. It worked out fine. Everything will be linked down in the description. So <laughs> last but not least, I have my little drawing bag, which has my pens, watercolor brushes, um, watercolor palette, and some little postcard watercolor paper, my erasers, that kind of stuff. Uh, it's nice and compact. Floating around the bottom of my duffel bag, there are always hand warmers. I try not to use these as much as I use my rechargeable hand warmer, but I always carry a bunch of these for emergencies. So these are pretty much always floating in the bottom of my duffel bag. <laughs> Clothing. All of this fits in one saddlebag. My clothing system is kind of a mix of packing cubes and also just stuffing it. My clothing system has definitely evolved a lot since the pilgrimage happened. I think that when I went on the pilgrimage, I had like seven cotton t-shirts, like three pairs of jeans. I tried to stuff all my clothes in Ziploc bags, which did not last very long, by the way. And quickly, by like the middle of the pilgrimage, I was sick of going through my clothes and digging stuff out. So I really only wore like two or three shirts and a sweater for the whole rest of the pilgrimage and like left the rest of my clothes stuffed in the bottom of my saddle bag. Um, I learned a lot. My current system, I don't normally take cotton like at all. I allow myself to take one cotton t-shirt as kind of my luxury hangout t-shirt. And then I don't wear jeans pretty much at all anymore. Especially after I broke my wrist in 2018, I couldn't button my pants with one hand. So I bought a bunch of hiking pants that were made of polyester and nylon. And they're so much more comfortable than jeans. So I pretty much don't own jeans anymore. <laughs> if you're somebody who is like a thorough jean wearer, you really only have to take one pair and just bring a pair of shorts to wear when you do laundry once a week because jeans don't really need to be washed that often. All of my packing cubes are from Tripped, which is a company owned by fellow YouTubers Tim and Finn, who are super awesome. And I'll link their channel down below because they're super rad travel vloggers. You should definitely go check out. Uh, starting with my underwear bag. Um, this is what I keep my socks, my bras, and my undies in. Um, all of my bras and underwear are from uh, Ex Officio. Um, I do have one bra from Icebreaker that is merino wool, but there's no wires, there's no clasps or anything to dig into my skin um, while I'm going down the road. So these are super nice and also Ex Officio underwear and bras are super fast drying so you can wash them in a sink or in a dry bag and know that they're going to be dry in like four to five hours which is super cool. Um, I normally carry like four pairs of socks. So I have a super thick like ski pair of socks. They come up to my knee and then I have a thinner pair that come up to my knee and then I have two other pairs. One nice thin that's just tall enough for my boots um, for like when it's super hot 
And then I have sleeping socks in this one as well that are like alpaca wool socks. So they're super toasty, not super nice to walk in, which is why they're my sleeping socks. Again, I there's nothing cotton in this bag. It's all polyester, uh, nylon, spandex, and merino wool. Moving on to my shirts. So I took two tank tops, one polyester, one merino wool, which sounds kind of funny, but it's actually super comfortable and really good at drawing the moisture away from your skin when you're hot. Two polyester t-shirts, my one luxury cotton t-shirt, which I think you guys saw quite a bit of in the videos, and two base layer long sleeves. One is a capeline long sleeve from Patagonia, and the other is a merino wool long sleeve from Smartwool. Moving on to pants. I've got two pairs of synthetic base layer leggings, um, because I did not own a pair of nice merino wool base layer leggings yet. I do now, which will be going on my next trip for sure. And then I have a nice pair of very thick polyester leggings from Eddie Bauer. The nice thing about wearing motorcycle pants all the time is that nobody cares what you're wearing under them, which means on a road trip, I can wear leggings like all the time. I do carry two pairs of like regular pants that are like appropriate for wearing around town if I'm off the bike. So I have one pair of kind of capri pants with cargo pockets because I'm all about pockets. These are also from Eddie Bauer. And then one pair of longer nylon hiking pants in case I'm not actually wearing my motorcycle boots. The capris are also really nice because the length stops right before my boots begin on my legs. So I don't have to worry about stuffing pants into my boots, which can get kind of uncomfortable. I also have a little laundry bag so that as things get dirty, they're not stinking up everything else. And then I also have this mobile warming heated base layer. It's battery powered, so I don't have to be hooked up to the bike. The other good thing about not having to be hooked up to the bike to have this heated means that it's fantastic for camping because if it gets hella cold, I can put this on under my fleece and my puffy in my sleeping bag and have a lot more heat to my core, um, especially if you know, you rode through the rain all day and you got to camp and are cold to the bone. This is awesome. I also took my Arc'teryx fleece. It packs down just a little bit better than my Patagonia fleece. All of my fleeces and puffies do not have hoods so that I can layer them under my motorcycle jacket without worrying about the hood getting damp or gross or anything. I stole one of my dad's pearl button shirts right before I left because it's nice and lightweight and super breathable, but um, good uh, for sun protection actually. I will also mention here that I kept a stowable rain jacket slash windbreaker uh, packed in my crash bar bag so it was easy to get at just in case I rolled into camp and it was raining. Last but not least in my clothing bag I keep my toiletries and my hairbrush. It's actually a tiny travel hairbrush that I broke the handle off of. <laughs> and yes, my shampoo, my toothbrush, soap, toothpaste, deodorant, um, some extra soap bars and uh, nail clippers and hair ties all fits in this tiny bag. If you would like to see more about this bag and hygiene on the road, I have a whole video about that. I will link above my head. Moving on to my kitchen or pretty much everything that went in the other saddlebag on my bike. My DJI Mavic Air drone actually lived in its little protective case and then all of that was also in its own dry bag in the saddlebag that kind of sat on top of everything. Um, so it was easy to stop and take out of my saddlebag because there just wasn't enough room for it in my tank bag with all of my other camera equipment. My little Sea to Summit X-Pot and my MSR quick skillet, which was nonstick, which was awesome. I don't know how I existed before. I think that I finally like hit the perfect combination of my pot and skillet so I could like make rice and set it aside and then fry stuff. Mm, it was so good. <laughs> my water bottle actually lived in the water bottle holster uh, on my crash bars, but I just wanted to include it here because I did carry a separate water bottle from the hydration pack in my backpack, which we'll talk about Later, that way I could put noon tablets and stuff in this water bottle and have it not gunk up 
my hydration bladder. I did take a little stasher silicone Ziploc bag to keep all of my trash in, and then I would just dump it when I got to a gas station or something like that. Uh, one big hunkin' thing of isobutane, and actually I didn't even use up the whole thing of isobutane that I took on the trip. I have a little Sea to Summit X bowl that I ate my oatmeal and stuff in. This little bag has my stove in it. This is actually uh, one of those classic Primus stoves. I actually like that it's rigid like this. It does take up more space than like a pocket rocket or something like that. But I have so much more confidence in this that my pot isn't just going to randomly fall off of my stove. This is like my kitchen equipment and staples. And then this is the bag that I just kept my food in a soup and rice and oatmeal and like stuff that I would stop at the grocery store and get is in this. So if anything explodes in that, I know it's not gonna get all over in my saddlebag. I've got one little choppy knife from MSR. This is my scrubby rag. It has like one really harsh side and a kind of a softer side. I did take this itty bitty measuring cup. It's so cute. And then it also has like tablespoons on the inside. So. This little pop-up cup is also kind of a measuring cup. Not the best, but I keep taking it because it really doesn't take up any space. And it's good for mixing up bouillon cubes in. This is the little bag that goes with my water filtration. Um, this is the Sawyer Squeeze. I don't think that I've ever camp somewhere where I've had to filter with the Sawyer Squeeze. I either like fill up my MSR water bladder before I get to camp or I camp somewhere that has potable water. But it's always good to have water filtration back up just in case you run out of water and you didn't get as much as you thought that you needed from town. Speaking of my MSR dromedary bag, this is four liters and it's nice and heavy duty so that I can strap it to the outside of my bags and know that it's not going to randomly break on me. And with the four liters, I have never needed like more water than that when I've camped by myself. Moving on in my little bag of tricks here. I have a super long handle spoon. This is really good for eating uh, dehydrated meals. So you can get down to the bottom of the bag without sticking your whole hand into it. Um, I also have the most itty bitty spatula that I just love. I also carry this itty bitty bamboo martini board as my cutting board. I just don't like plastic cutting boards and this has worked really great. I can't believe that it hasn't broken yet, but it hasn't. I also have this little MSR scrubber. You know, evidently one rag for cleaning my dishes wasn't enough. <laughs> my little bottle opener and a lighter. I also carry matches. And then last but not least, I have a couple spices and like little jars that I got from the art store. So I normally carry like salt and basil and garlic powder, onion powder, cinnamon. I also have a tiny little squeeze bottle of olive oil. And then, you know, because it's me, there's just a ton of uh, tea bags in the bottom of this bag. <laughs> yeah, kitchen stuff. Okay, shall we go over my hydration backpack? So in here I have a two liter hydration bladder with the hose so that I can just straight up drink water while I'm riding without having to stop. I've got my tiny emergency poncho that I bought when I was in Virginia. I have my little stowable grocery bag. This is where I keep my black diamond headlamp so I always know where my light is. I took some Bacardin insect repellent. Uh, it's not spray, it's lotion, so you just like rub down. I did spray my tent and my gear with uh, permethrin before I left. Permethrin is really nasty, so you don't want it anywhere near your skin. So like outer layers of clothing and your tent is fine. And it did a really good job of repelling the bugs. My rechargeable hand warmer, a bunch of tea because it's me. There's never enough tea. I'm obviously very worried I'm gonna run out of tea. Um, and this is also where I kept my Garmin inReach. Hydration backpack, yay. This is kind of like my garage on the bike. So this is everything that was in the two crash bar bags and the tool tubes on the back of my bike that are mounted on the inside of my saddlebag racks. So everybody asks me what they are, why they're there, what I keep in them. <laughs> they're actually tractor manual tubes. You can find them at a lot of farm supply, tractor supply companies online. They're a lot cheaper than tool tubes that a lot of motorcycle distributors uh, sell them as. <laughs> you can also just as easily make your own tool tubes out of PVC pipe like my brother did. The things I keep in those tubes specifically is my little extra gas can. 
a chain lube and a old toothbrush to clean my chain with. Super exciting. <laughs> Moving on to the stuff that was in uh, the two small rolly bags on my crash bars on the front of the bike. I've got a little jump start pack thanks to a wonderful subscriber who bought me one before my trip so that just in case my battery died again like it did at Babes Art Out, I would be able to jump start my own battery. I have a stop and go mini air compressor again thanks to a wonderful subscriber. Gorilla tape because you know. I kept a mini tripod in those front bags and almost never used it because I love my new tripod so much. I also uh, took that new pair of Revit gloves that turned out to be too small. I did buy a new pair that fit me, which is cool. Um, I have my rain and snow gloves. Um, these are the Climb Allure snowmobile gloves. Ta-da! Tool roll. I am not a mechanic. I don't know enough to give other people advice. I know enough to take care of my bike and that's that's good enough for me. <laughs> I also have this like little timer thing for my camera for time lapses that I didn't end up getting to use. And an extra beanie because that's important. And then Pete, <laughs> when I stopped and saw them in Colorado, they gave me a ton of extra uh, little microfiber towels, which was super nice. Oh, and uh, my flat repair kit and an extra buff. Moving on to some of the stuff that I kept in my tank bag. Obviously my big camera I'm filming with right now that is the a7R2. I also took the 50 prime lens which I am filming with right now on the trip. And then I have the Sony A5100 that I also took with me that has the uh, kit lens on it, the 16 to 50. Pretty much all of the audio for the whole trip I recorded with the Rode Video Mic Go. I'll link it down in the description <laughs> on top of the Sony a7R2 and then the uh, in-house mic on the a5100. This little pack has all of my batteries for the a7 and the 5100 and also the GoPro. <laughs> so I have five batteries for the GoPros and eight batteries for the Sony cameras. I have this little guy for charging the GoPro batteries. It fits three in there, and then it also has a little SD card reader, which is only really useful when you're hooked up to a regular computer. This little guy is my SD card holder. I also, in my tank bag, I had my wired headphones, and I'm sure you can see the wires flying about a ton in some of the videos. And then I also have my Sony uh, Bluetooth headphones for a while I'm at camp and stuff. And then for this trip, I had two GoPros. I had I bought the GoPro Hero 5 Black right before the trip to have a dedicated handlebar camera. And then the GoPro Hero 7 Black for my chin mounted stuff. And then I always kept a little USB-C cord in my tank bag so I can keep my phone charged. Um, there was also always chapstick in my tank bag. And this is mineral sunscreen. And then also I had like a ton of these like lens cloth cleaning things just floating around inside my tank bag. I did make kind of like a foam solution to keep all my camera gear safe inside of my tank bag. That kind of deteriorated by the end of the trip so I no longer have it but I will insert footage the few clips that I have of it. Just some miscellaneous stuff. Everybody keeps asking me what kind of GoPro mount I have on my helmet. It's the Telesyn chin mount. It is always linked down in the description, you guys. So if you have a question, check the description first. Chances are I've already linked it there. Um, I did take the 10C Evo on this trip. There is also just like a ton of stuff that just kind of like float around in my riding gear. Like I always have like a Kula cloth, which is a P-rag, a Go Girl, which is a P-funnel essentially. I kept a bunch of my receipts in one pocket. I kept a buff in another pocket. I'm sure there's a ton of stuff that I'm forgetting. Oh, I also had like a pack towel um, that doubled as kind of like a thicker yoga mat. Um, I have no idea where that is right now, so I don't have that to show you, but it was really pretty. For the riding gear, I had the Scorpion XO Yosemite riding suit for the trip. I've had the suit for like two years. I had the Garen All-Terrain Gore-Tex boots and a pair of Fox gloves. And I have no idea where those are right now either. And my helmet is the Scorpion XO 18950. I have a review of this helmet, um, which I will link above my head and down in the description if you are interested in it. I'm gonna take a second to talk about the luggage on the bike that went on this trip. They are all the brand new 2020 lineup of Wolfman luggage, including the 2020 Black Hawk tank bag, which is 100% waterproof, 
which was a game changer on this trip. I have two pairs of small waterproof rollies on my crash bars, um, one water ball holster on this side. Then I have the 2020 Rocky Mountain Expedition dry saddlebags. And then I have the large Expedition dry duffel on the top. And then I have the tent bull bag, which I use to house my tripod. All right, beautiful people. Thank you so much for watching this. I hope that you enjoyed this video. Please hit that like and subscribe button if you did. If you would like to support the channel and get early access to videos like these ad free before the rest of the world, and also occasionally Patreon only videos for as little as $1 a month, you can support me over on Patreon. If that's not up your alley, that is totally okay. I also have t-shirts, stickers, prints, all the good things with my motorcycle art on them over on my Redbubble and my Etsy shop. If you would like to get something hand packaged and sent to you by me, that is what my Etsy shop is for. Links to those things are down in the description. If you cannot support me monetarily right now, that is absolutely okay. I appreciate you guys just for being here every single week. And in the meantime, guys, end screen crew question. <laughs> Are you a Ziploc bag person or a packing cube person? Or secret option number three, do you just stuff it all in there and worry about it later? That kind of gives me the heebie-jeebies a little bit. <laughs> all right, guys, I'll see you later. <laughs> just a perspective on time. I've used up two batteries of the heated gear trying to keep myself warm. So for anybody who's keeping track, still don't feel good. But I'm here and I'm doing the thing. Whew.